So we're back and we got some crazy results. <laughs> unexpected. Very unexpected. So this is the control. Notice it is no longer in this. <sighs> there was a lot of comments about keeping it the same. Yep. Once you remove it from here, it is no longer the, the, the control or the control. Uh, all valid. However, we have pretty much already established what it can do. We've took it to the range a couple of times, yeah. pretty much consistent results. Uh, so we decided, or we kicked around the idea of Stop putting it in, a, in, a, in an Oryx as well, so that they're both the same, so that when we go to the range, they feel as equal as possible, at least while testing them, so that, again, we can only isolate the, uh, the barrel. Uh, <laughs> however, there was a lot of people saying, well, you know, leave it in the same stock. Well, try it in a, you know, a different stock. This is, uh, what is this? This is a Magpul Mag Hunter. Hunter. Try in a Magpul Hunter. Try in, uh, what is this? K they, or D? This is the X-ray. They asked for a Bravo. I don't have a Bravo, okay. but I do have an X-ray, so. Uh, and obviously the Oryx. So, obviously, in search for the truth, <laughs> <laughs> Jason figured it'd be a great idea if we just try it in all of these and see if it makes a difference and if it does how much so why don't you tell us how that went well started off by we started off in the stock um stock <laughs> and i shot five rounds just to foul the barrel well and before we go any further this one is not stock we we bedded it bedded we pillar bedded it and we glass bedded it not the entire length only the uh, recoil lug area mm -hmm. because it's pretty pointless to do everything else because as flimsy as it is it's just gonna crack so again just pillars and better the recoil lug that's it well the recoil lug and under the uh, you know the front screw but that's it uh free floated it and removed the uh pads the little pads over here in the front that people were saying don't remove well we removed them you want that barrel to free float I mean, look at that. <laughs> this is the pinky test. The pinky test. Anyway, continue. So, my five, five round Fowlers, and on average, this is what this gun's been shooting out of that chassis. Yep, so this is what it's been doing, which is, I'm gonna get a tape measure. All right, better than tape measure, it's calipers. So you measure center to center on the extreme holes, Less than an inch. So this is actually, actually the other way you can do this is you measure a hole. So this is a six five. So we're just gonna go to two sixty four. Okay, and then you zero the calipers at two sixty four, and now you measure outside to outside. So this is actually. Right at 900. So this is 900. This is sub MOA. Mm. And this is in the stock? In the stock. Okay. Sub MOA. This Still is jumping around. Still. Yeah. <laughs> this is uh, Fowlers, right? This yes, is this, just the Fowlers. This is the Fowlers. Like this is a start from a clean barrel. Clean barrel. So we, we, every time they come back, they get clean. And I mean clean. And we don't put that many rounds on them, but either way, 10, 15, mm -hmm. they get cleaned. Uh, you know, the works. Uh, patch out, I also, everything. Clean, clean. This is the first five after scrubbing the barrel completely down. 900, you know, so sub and white. So then, keeping it stock, loaded, shot another five round group. I'm not sure this one. This one is 450 thousandths. 
470. Half a moy. Let's call it half a moy. Five shots. In this. Complain about that, I guess. Uh, I can. It's so, still so what did you do? It? Well, yeah. I mean, it's still very hard to shoot. Very uncomfortable. So, however, <laughs> we've pretty much proven that if you really want to save, if you want to keep it very low budget, pillar bedded, pillar bedded, hey, last bed the recoil lug. So, keep original before we pillar bedded it and everything. It was shooting an inch and a half after we. Pillar bedded it, took it out. Same inch and a half groups. Right. Like it, it remained the same. And right. then that's when it's like, okay, let's just throw it in another, right, another chassis and get comfortable behind it. Right. And, which leads us up to this. So, you know. Um, now, before we go any further, oh, uh, that is a brand new barrel. Mm -hmm. There's a chance that it's just getting better as it's getting good. You know, I mean, we scrub it. We, we technically we're lapping it with Ioso, right? So it it's it may just be getting better. However, that is one. If I had to say, that is one vote for keeping it in this the entire time. Most definitely. If there's a big difference between these, so yeah. let's 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 keep on going. So then took it out and I threw it in the Magpul Hunter. Um, so definitely a step up from the stock chassis, more rigid, more comfortable, um, behind the gun. Um, yeah, mag will everything. And then fired two five round groups with it. And so the first one I assume was the top one. Yes, it was. So the first one is right there. And that one measures 630. So let's call that 5 8 10 away. Yep. And then, so for the second one, guess which on that second group, guess which one was the first shot? <laughs> if I had to guess, I'm gonna say this one. It was. Know. And guess what the muzzle velocity on that was? I don't know. 2600. Wow. So something was up with that round. Like okay. it was, everything about it was off. So well, let's it's measure, safe to let's say. Let's measure all the other four. And it's right at 800 thousandths of an inch. So slightly over five slightly eighths one. or uh, three quarter. It's actually 13, 16, same way. <laughs> Do you want to get technical? Uh, obviously if we measure the whole thing, it's one and a half in a uh, either way, that's still no, showing a lot no of worse power. than what stock shot. So right, um, right. I mean, this this is uh, this is obviously still still winning, but this ain't this is not too. Far. Look look at these two. They're very close to each other. So that next, point, you changed it again. Change it again and put it into the KRG X-ray chassis. All right, so then the KRG is up next. Now we're into a much heavier, much, much more expensive, more expensive um, chassis. What's the retail on one of these? Uh, that particular one, because it's half the aluminum, is probably about 800 bucks. Okay, so now, you know, 800 or so, plus, I mean, because, now let's go back all the way back because you shot this off of Harris. The Harris bipod. So so not only And then that's the Magpul right. bipod. But now you now you're talking you what is this? That's the Thunder, Thunder Beast. Beast. So now you have a Thunder Beast bipod which is three, four hundred bucks. Yep. <laughs> so now, now we're getting pricey here. Yep, definitely. How much did it improve or did it? De I have not seen the targets. <laughs> it uh, I don't know about, y yes, it's an improvement, um, more um, just being comfortable behind the gun, that is more than okay. anything. Um, did it improve the groups? Nah, the stock still beat it. What? Look at the target. <laughs> 
You're drawing smiley faces. I'm drawing smiley, smiley faces. All right. Now this is all five. Or? Uh, so um, on now. Now the point of aim is the bottom circle. These. Yep. Okay. Um, but this was my first um, five round group, and I was aiming here, and the round did hit. Same point of impact moved up. Um, I caught it, so I moved down in the bottom. So. Moving it around in chassis or stocks, it changes point of impact. It, it does, but when you look at how, um, I mean, with all these, if you start looking at, like, with the contact mm -hmm. and, and how deep the barrel is sitting in the stocks, from the Magpul to the KRG to the Oryx, they're all sitting very high, which is representative um, okay. on, in the target. All right, so... Here's the KRG X-ray. So let's measure. Eight hundred, mm -hmm. and the smiley face. That is a perfect face. smiley face. I think these are the two. Six seventy. So so almost about, identical to the Magpul. Very similar to Magpul. Um. But, but still can't get below half a moy like the, like the factory stock did. Um, but you look at you know with the Magpul and and the KRG, um, the the consistency in the groups and how they pattern um, says a lot. Yeah. I don't know, man. It's hard to be in a small group. Mm, it is. <laughs> All right, and finally. Threw it the, back into the Oryx. The Oryx. Um, I did shoot this with the Thunder Beast, not uh, the Atlas. Um, what is this? Uh, is the, oh, this is the, the Accutac. Accutac, yeah. This thing's a beast, but it's too short. Anyway. Oh. Uh, Cut to the chase. Just cut to the chase. Okay, so the first group measured one and a quarter MOA. That's in, you know that's counting all of them. Mm -hmm. The second was much better. The second one we're looking at eight hundred thousand. Yep. So seems like. Seems like this is uh, about a three-quarter MOA, kind of averaging, you know, without looking at all the, you know, reading or measuring all, all over again. I seem to have measured somewhere around three-quarter more often than not. Uh, and of course, there's that sub-half MOA. <laughs> so that out of the stock, stock. <laughs> <sighs> oh. So anyway, that's what happened when we decided we didn't know what to do. Leave it in stock or are we are we losing ground by doing that? Uh, should we try something different? And you guys had a lot of, you know, good suggestions. And uh, we decided to test everything. <laughs> <laughs> what do we do now? Like this is the control, right? It's supposed to stay in the stock. Strangely, that's where it shoots the best. Yeah. Well, uh, well so here's some factors now um, that that's 10 rounds out of the stock. Mm -hmm. So the barrel's not heated or anything like that, right? The yeah. breaks that I took were literally taking the action mm -hmm. out of the stock into the next stock and went so you're So you're, 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 you're doing stuff in between. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's a possibility that it's a wash. It, it could be. What, like, I mean, one test. Right, it's, it's one test. But so still. how can we, you know, I can go shoot cold each stock, mm -hmm. where five fowlers then a five round group and, and see how it does. Um, but I, I don't believe in that. I, like, you know, they, your gun has to be able to shoot hot as well, so. Right, and I mean, some of these are good. Well, they're good. I mean, that, that's not too shabby. Uh, the smiley face group. That's not too bad. I mean, all of them, they all shot good groups. You know, see, 
Okay, this is what I'm talking about. Look at that group. Look at this group. Okay, I'm going to try to line them all up. Look at these. And look at the one on the right. Or the left now. They all are very similar in shape and size. I'm going to call this a three-quarter MOE gun for now. Yep. I think I'm pretty confident calling it that. Which is uh, pretty good. Especially when all you got to do is bed it. Pillar bed it. And, you know, glass bed the recoil lug. Now, <laughs> I suggest that you do this yourself. Learn how to do it. You can buy those pillars online. And we actually, and because it's a budget thing, we use JB Weld. We didn't use Marine Text. We didn't use uh, uh, that other one, uh, that epoxy. Defcon. Defcon. We used JB Weld just because we wanted to keep it very budget. And uh, <laughs> I don't really recommend JB Weld because it's kind of a pain. Uh, plus, it doesn't stick very well to plastic. But either way, if you can pillar bed it, if, if there's only one thing you want to do to this thing, free float it, pillar bed it, yeah. and, and you have yourself a pretty good budget. Uh, like overall, shooting all the chassis again, I still hate shooting that stock chassis. <laughs> Jumping, it's not comfortable. Surprisingly, um, the Magpul Hunter was the most comfortable um, out of all of them. Just the cheap heights, everything, just as it sits. Like the, yeah. the balance of the, the rifle in that stock and everything, it felt um, balanced. That's just the best way. That well, that's... It still it's, jumped it's, a little bit, but like, and I'm thinking about this, because, I mean, with this barrel, the contour of the barrel, this is a hunting application, and that's how my mentality is, is that, okay, if I'm gonna hunt with this, um, <coughs> that Magpul Hunter um, stock is a good match with this rifle for balance and, and being steady, and then having the option for, you know, a, a decent bipod with <coughs> some stability. Now, what if you were gonna try to compete with it? I don't know, maybe go dip your toes in a PRS match. Yep. Um, can't beat the like now. If I want an all around, um, like with the balance, uh, our budget, the orcs <coughs> is, is. I mean, we've proven that we can get. Um, yeah, yeah. Smaller groups, and we can be <coughs> very stable with it. Excuse me. And then coming back to that, the KRG, it just sat like the recoil was just tink, tink, which was nice. Um, so, so at this point. You like all around the Oryx. Good balance. If you're gonna just hunt with it or the Magpul. The right? Magpul Hunter, yeah, definitely. But also, I mean, this, you can't. You can't it, it, it's, it's shooting nice. Now, what do we do going forward? That's the question. Uh, yeah. Because, um, I mean, you still hate the way this recalls, right? The way it handles. I do. You still hate it. And. Here's the thing, they don't really want us to mess with the control. Yeah, no, they don't. <laughs> so I was going to suggest we can put a brake on there, but it, that would help the recoil, then it'd make it a lot easier to shoot off of this thing. It would. But at this point, leaving the control alone doesn't really do us any good, I don't think. I mean, what's the point of just shooting group after group after group with the same setup? So we know, we've proven it can shoot. I mean, we, yeah. we can be done with the control. That's how I'm looking at. Like, so, we know do we shooting. change? What do we change? Just throw it in the chassis and leave it there? And that, and now this becomes the updated control. And the other one, the number one, uh, keep it in the chassis and then add a brake? Yep. Like keep one we, a step behind the other? Or well, we, we know um, if we make these rifles identical, Mm -hmm. They're shooting even right now. <clears throat> yes, they are. They're shooting the same size groups. So I think that's where we go. Where? 
would, I say put, we, a, put, a, put an Oryx on, <clears throat> on both? An Oryx on both. And then um, I think we do on the other, the other one, I think we thread it and put a tuner brake on it. Okay, let's go back to the, to the first video that we did where we shot them both out of the box. Mm -hmm. And one shot horrendously bad and this one shot pretty good. Now that they're, or, you know, if we, if we compare the Oryx groups, they're very similar. Very. So that shows us like, they, they're very similar. <clears throat> oh, people have asked about the uh, serial numbers. How equal are the rifles? They're within three numbers of each other. Hmm. So they're as consecutive as they can be. So it's probably obvious that maybe the one will have just too much contact on the barrel. Could be. So, you know, it was in the stock. Okay, see now. Now what? We have 40 rounds. This rifle has 40 rounds more than the other one. So we got to get the other rifle caught up to this. Yeah. How do we do that? I. Tune it, break and tune it. <clears throat> tune it, break and tune it. 40 rounds. An easy. All right, what do you think we should do now? I mean, I'm, I really don't know where to go from here, honestly. Okay. With this one, the control, does it stay controlled? And if so, what's the purpose at this point? Yeah. I think we start upgrading it, but that's just me. Uh, throwing a chassis, like I said, just keep it about a, a step behind the other one. And, uh, or do we just say, just make them both the same and then start comparing them, yeah. you know? Yeah. I don't know. As far as the control, I, again, saying it again, we're done with the control. We've proven <clears> it. <throat> you know, they're shooting the same. And that's modifying. <laughs> okay, well, you say modify. A lot of people say leave it in here, but I say what's the point? Well, there you have it. Let us know what you think we should do because I really don't know. Part of me wants to just make them both exactly the same and then just go see how they do. Uh, and maybe start putting me behind behind the, behind them. And uh, that way we can start seeing some three and a half and away again. <laughs> what else is there to do? Trigger? Trigger. A lot of people have suggested, hey, change the trigger. That is what... That is one of the most common yep. Revan 700 upgrades. So trigger, tuner brake, um, bolt, bolt handle. Yeah, we can springs. We can yeah, we can change the spring out. See if it makes a difference. Uh, there's all kinds of things we can do to it, but at this point, <clears throat> I don't know. Leave it like that. Yeah. Throw a brake on there. Throw a brake. I think we should make them both the same. I do too. I do. All right, well, that's where we're at. So, if you disagree, let us know. Because, as you can see, we read the comments. <laughs> and uh, that really, they really influence the path that this thing is taking. But, anyway. Dude, that's all I got. This is, uh, this was, was not eye-opening. Wasn't expecting this that stock chassis to outperform the other ones. The stock stock. The stock stock. All right, well, let us know. Thank you. Keep them centered. It's getting easier. <laughs> it's getting easier. Tonight I'm feeling me Gonna make an ugly scene Tonight I'm